Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So I'm going to begin by doing my month 11 party status update video here. And this is going to be part one where I cover the tanks because I just have too many heroes that I would have to cover otherwise. I think I previously mentioned, but there's 32 heroes who have gear on them. And there is roughly basically 32 heroes that I use. <laughs> so it's kind of ridiculous. And so given that's the case, I have to split this up. I have no choice but to split it up to talk about the characters according to their category. Um, actually, I think I actually use more than 32 as a side note, because characters like Olivier and Varna get used for Ancient Beckoning, Jessica gets used, Lithany occasionally sees use. So yeah, there is more than 32 heroes that are actually used out of my characters. So maybe 32 minus 1, 31 plus 1, 2, 3, 4. So 35 heroes total get used. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about the tanks. I'm just going to go by class, right? Uh, or category of characters. So here we go with the tanks in this video. So this video will be covering the tanks I use, which are actually, I think, five of them. There is Landius, there is Juggler, there is Ledin, there is Bernhard for the fourth tank, and the fifth and final tank, which never actually appears in a video, but does get used, is Freya. Alright, so we'll start from highest power level down to lowest. And let's start with Landius. Not much needs to be said, Landius was built because of PvP purposes, and he recently hit 6 stars in total. Um, as a result of being 6 stars, he is my most powerful tank. People have said that, have told me repeatedly, that Landius as a tank for PvE content works perfectly as well. So, Yiles Legends, using Landius, using Rachel, using Liana, using a DPS and so on, can clear all PvE content and get you all the Time Rift uh, stars and... Yeah, Time Rift stars and Time Rift treasures and so on. And feats, of course. So it is very, very viable. Um, I know for a fact that several people on my server, like Method and I think Joshua and I think it's Sweet Dango as well, all use US Legends to clear PvE content. So there you go. For my videos, of course, I use Ledin because I started with him and I just continued on with my videos that way, not switching tanks. But it's just interesting to note that Ledin is equally viable. Uh, he was built for PvE though. Or sorry, he was built for PvP though, and that's where I primarily use him. Equipment-wise, it's quite PvP focused with an Overlord's badge for the immunities. And there's his helmet for the extra hit points and defense. A mirror armor for fixed damage beforehand, as well as hit point and defense increase. And then a Dragon Slayer Gram for the hit point increase and attack increase. You know, the only thing I could improve on my Landius in truth is to get more plus attack percentage rolls, right? He has 8% here and I think 12% here. That's a 20% attack increase in total, which is actually very, very low, given that the maximum is 35%. But for what I use him for, he does his job, and he has the Thorns enchant because Thorns, when the damage reflection kicks in, can really allow Landius to kill a target in a counterattack. But once again, if I were to optimize him, I need more attack increases. This needs to be at least 15%. Preferably 15% with another attack increase. There has to be some attack increase on the mirror armor. There has to be some attack increase on the Anasis helmet. We'll see on that. Yeah. It's very hard for me to try to re-roll these ones when there's like a 21% increase here. And you know, fit, although this one could be re-rolled. Once again, we'll see. It's not something I'm in a rush to re-roll on. You know, I'm not very PvP focused anymore. But it's left as is for now. Juggler. Juggler I've been building up for, he was originally being built up purely for PvP content, but then I realized just how good he is for Jormungan, for several battles in Ancient Beckoning, right? Uh, he is the, he is incredible for two of them, in fact. Um, very, very good for the currently running one, Fenrir, which, I, which is where I use him on, and also very, very good, almost required for the Jormungandir battle. 
You know, if I take a quick look, pretty much everyone here runs juggler. Juggler, juggler, juggler. More jugglers. Yet another juggler. And another juggler, you know. Juggler. Juggler. I bring juggler, you know. There's another juggler. I'm not going to keep going down the list, but literally, basically everyone here in the top 20 have juggler in their team. So, in terms of build, my juggler ended up being very, very similar to Landius in bringing an Overlord's badge. He has his exclusive, which is basically a must because it allows him to ignore the cost limit of skills. He has a last raid because that makes him hard to kill, and an Oath of Justice. Thorns enchant, just like Landius, for PvP purposes. If you were purely focused on PvE, there is a better option than Thorns. You know, for example, you might want you know, two blue enchants for 10% defense and match defense increase. Or you might want two green enchants for 20% hit point increase. You know, there's other options in the enchants if you're just using Juggler for PvE content. As for the accessory, I should quickly mention, Juggler's accessory is very, very open overall. Overlord's badge is not required. I used Overlord's badge because I picked up, I think, three of them early on. So it was, by process of elimination, the item to give my Juggler. But he can very easily use other items. For example, good items for Juggler include the Blood Pact. Um, it includes a Swordsmith Medal if you have one for him, because that grants, that grants immunity to silence and so on. He, we saw in the Season 1 Finals that a lot of the people's jugglers used the plus one mobility SSR boots, which is... Um, can't remember the name off the top of my head because I don't have one, so I'm going to take a look at it. Divine Boots, right? Because Divine Boots gives defense for the increased stats, hit points for increased hit points, and the mobility buff. Yep. I've also seen jugglers with Spirit Boots, right, allowing them to move after attacking. So there's lots and lots of items for the accessory that Juggler can use, and it's very hard to pick the best one. Alright, so that was my second tank. Oh, as for soldiers... Yeah. Soldiers-wise, you know, Juggler uses Lobster Behemoths. My Lobster Behemoths were left at level 9 because I don't have the materials to upgrade to level 10. <laughs> you know what? 46% damage e decrease was enough overall. I gave up a bit of stats and so on, but uh, it worked out. Royal Calvary on Landius, I should mention, uh, th because they provide the physical damage decrease of 45%. Works out very well. So those are the first two. Next then is my third tank, Leden, who is my PvE tank. You know, I use them for all my content clearing in all my videos. And that's because I used them from day one, and I will continue to do so for my videos. It's just, I think most people have Leaden built, so people who want videos to follow generally want to see Leaden in my videos. Um, my Leaden was 5 stars. Never raised them up to 6. The, the 6 star increase, don't get me wrong, it's worth it. There's more hit points, more defense, more magic defense, which means he hits harder. And then the damage taken, he, he gets the damage taken decrease, I think goes up to 15%. Right? So it's definitely worth upgrading if you can. Um, but for my videos, you know, I just rely on the five star Leaden, which makes them easier to follow overall. Because it's a five star Leaden, my gear is kind of weird right now. It used to be an Oath of Justice here, right? But it became a Seal Guardian because. Landius and Lestelle needed Oaths of Justices. So when they both each got one, Leden lost his oath. And because I needed to find a piece of equipment for him, and I had three sealed guardians, two of which were just sitting around, I just gave it to him because it had provided the 5% defense increase. Just did I think I just rolled like three times, got this roll, and settled for it. If I were to replace this weapon on my Leden, well, I do have another Oath of Justice. <laughs> Afterwards, I picked up a third one, so I could give that to him. But more likely, rather than building up that Oath of Justice, I would instead build up Leden's exclusive. Right? He recently picked up an exclusive, the Trial of Faith. So 
I'll probably purchase that eventually and give it to him. There's no rush at all. I mean, that seal guardian is kind of working out, so we'll work with it for now. Right. My Lennon has a Gaius armor for dam for the 15% defense increase as well as magic damage decrease. Not required. You can very easily and very happily use even an Aeneas' armor. Yeah. Mirror armor. I've seen lots of people run mirror armor. Right? Aeneas' armor would work. Just any armor in truth would work for Leiden. It's not, it, this item is really not a big priority. The Sharon, well, the Sharon I feel is pretty much a must to have because it provides a defense 10% increase there. And most importantly, right, there is that debuff. Generally not required for most content. Like I didn't have my Sharon on Leiden until I think November. But, uh, being able to apply this debuff of all damage received increased by 15% on the enemy is huge. It really, really helps. Makes a lot of battles easier, like eternal temple fights, dragon fights, etc, etc, etc. Not necessary, makes life easier kind of thing. And very, very... And it, the Sharon is very, very nice for Ancient Beckoning. As you saw me use it constantly for Ancient Beckoning battles. And finally, he has the King's Amulet because the King's Amulet provides a 10% defense and 10% magic defense increase. That's the most amount of increase in uh, you can get from an accessory, right? And that 10% will really, really buff up the amount of damage he does when counterattacking. Of course, using this King's Amulet means that I always have to have a healer with a Sage's Hat or Yadrasil Reef next to him to, to provide the immunities. But it's a trade-off well worth it. You know, for PvE content, I usually end up running Ledin, Tiaris, Liana, uh, Sophia, and then just one DPS, right? So it works out. With three healers, one of them can always stand next to Ledin. So three of the four tank, three of the five tanks covered. The fourth tank is Bernhard. And Bernhardt in some ways is not a tank, he's more of a hybrid. I'm going to cover him here in large part because I use him very frequently as a tank for PvE content. Specifically, I use him with the parry skill so that he can take physical attacks for one nearby friendly unit. I use him this way because oh, of, so. well, Guild Wars. And there were a few. And I've actually used him this way for PvP before as well in the past. Definitely in Season 1, he's appeared multiple times. In large part, that's because sometimes I decide not to pick a tank first, right? And then my opponent bans Landius and Juggler. And then by process of elimination, I have to bring Bernhard as my tank. Right. So it would be nice and it really should be done for me to raise up my Bernhard, right? Six stars would be nice as well as maybe getting his side branch, the general class, so he can officially have Iron Fist, which is the two guard range skill of his. And right now I'm just working with parry. Nonetheless, with the parry skill, he works out quite well. Generally speaking, for PvP, the way I use him is faction buff, parry, and then sword dance for an AoE attack where he can do damage to the enemy and not take any counter attack and most importantly apply, cannot be healed on them. Right. Works out quite well. Hegemony is usually brought for PvE content to dispel buffs and decrease enemy defense. And soldier choices, he has tons of them. Uh, Lava Titan is very useful on Bernhard for the burn. And being a Lancer class soldier. Dark Guards are surprisingly good when he does need to attack because they can self-heal a bit and do some fixed damage to the enemy and so on. Uh, and of course, the training ground for infantry tends to have a lot of damage reduction effects and so on, so they're pretty good. And skeleton knights are incredibly tanky soldiers as long as they're not facing any holy class opponents. Because these skeleton knights, well, they have... Skeleton knights being a demon class get more stats than most soldiers do. When attacked, their defense is increased by a pretty significant amount. When attacking, they restore health if they've all been killed. And finally, the training ground techs for demons are surprisingly tanky as well. Right? Um, from the elite training, I think? Yes. When you're attacked by units other than demon and holy units, defense and magic defense is increased by a certain percentage. So that further strengthens 
the toughness of these skeleton uh, knights. They also have got the new tech, um, where all demons gain additional damage whenever they have a debuff. I'm not quite sure how that works out. I haven't used it yet. It's at level 1, but it is what it is. So that covers Skeleton Knights. My Skeleton Knights are currently level 7, so I have been trying to kind of level them up, but I've been very limited by the holy books that I have access to. And when they hit level 10, just like the Hellfire Archers, they get all stats plus 40%, whereas standard units get all stats plus 30%. So they get an additional 10% stats. So that is my Bernhardt. Usually used as a tank, more for PvE purposes than PvP, although he does appear as a tank in PvP. But in PvE, he will generally run Lava Titans for Guild Wars. And then after these four, the very final tank I personally use is Freya. And the reason I use Freya is because of the fixed damage she can deal. Freya is, is, has a surprising number of fixed damage strikes. Sorrow Full Choice is one fixed damage hit. Lance Phallix is a second one. Barbs is a third fixed damage hit. Mirror Armor, which I have a level 51 with thorns on, is a fourth fixed damage hit. I did actually purchase her Crown of Thorns, even though I haven't put any resources to upgrade it, upgrading it, but it's a fifth fixed damage hit. You can say Thorns Enchant itself is a potential 6th fixed damage hit, and then because I have a Holy Arc level 50 on her, that's another some more damage reflection, that's a 7th fixed damage hit, effectively. So it's kind of bonkers <laughs> um, with the amount of fixed damage she can do. I mainly use her just for the fixed damage, Timeless Trials, So and I also use her as my tank for Princess and Origins of Light, Guild Wars. So there are there are situations where you never see her because I never do videos on these things, but she gets used every week for sure. Yeah. This is a week where it does where this guild wars is a scenario where it doesn't because there was neither princess or uh, organs of light, but it's very very rare for that to occur. So those are my five tanks that I use. And I guess the last thing to talk about would be their bonds, right? Landius, bonds, fully upgraded, 96%. Juggler, bonds, are also fully upgraded, I think. 86%, and that's because his hero strength bond is not upgraded. It's at level 3. I started upgrading it a bit because of the skill increase. But then I stopped once again because I realized I don't want to PvP anymore. But if you do PvP, you probably will have to actually start maxing out his strength bond because the skill increase will help protect him against Omega. So those are the two tanks. Bernhard, bonds, 96%, all maxed out. Right. Ledin, bonds. Everything but the Strength Bond is maxed out, and the Strength Bond was actually at level 5. Not quite sure why I did that, in truth. I think I upgraded it early on without thinking, and then realized that I didn't need to upgrade it any further and stopped. And then last but not least will be Freya's Bonds, and Freya... Where is she? Her Bonds are not, fully, are not upgraded fully at all, because she is my PvE character. There she is. 60%. Max on the first, max on the second. Only level 9 on this uh, soldier upgrade bond because her soldiers are tanky enough. There's level 3 on the strength bond, level 3 on the toughness bond, and just a level 1 on the heart bond. Yeah. If you are serious about using Freya, which you shouldn't be, but if you were, she does kind of need all of them upgraded in truth. But more of a focus on the toughness bond and the heart bond because these increase the defense values, as well as hit points, and magic defense. And those increases is where her fixed damage comes from. Her, tough, her strength bond, the fifth bond, is also important in some ways because Freya's counterattack damage is actually based on her attack, unlike, other, unlike the other heroes who can replace their attack value with you know, 1.5 times defense or whatever, she doesn't have a skill like that. 
So, in other words, Lance Phalex is just fixed damage. So, in that case, her attack bond, her strength bond actually matters. The only exception is if your Freya, I think, actually went into Valkyrie. Because I think Valkyrie's Iron Rose effect. Yes, Iron Rose does substitute defense with 80. Oh no. It doesn't replace the attack either. It replaces the defense value with 80% of the magic defense value. So, in the end, no matter what, if she gets attacked, her counter attack damage is based on her attack value. Although the fixed damage comes from, other, from you know, her defense and magic defense values. Kind of confusing in some ways. Okay, so those are my five tanks. Um, is there anything else to mention? I guess I should quickly cover the gear, the enchants values, right? So Freya, I made her just pure defense increase. So the Holy Ark has an 8% defense. Like the Crown of Florence has 15% with 1% hit points and 10 defense. This was actually just a regular SR scroll that I rolled. Um, I just kept rolling the SR scrolls that I had because I keep stocking up on them. And then I managed to get this. So a max defense roll. This was also SR, of course. Mirror armor was an SR. No, this mirror armor, I think, was passed down from another character. And it managed to get 8% defense, 7% hit points, 4% attack. Good enough. And then finally, Thorns, 13% attack increase. Yeah. More than enough. What? Th but in the end, all of these were SR scrolls. Right? I'm not interested in committing all th that much resources into building up my PvE character, Freya. And the other thing of note is there's no Epic Martial Spirit in the Yggdrasil branch and no Epic Martial Spirit in the Crown of Thorns. Bernhard. Bernhard's focus was attack, from what I remember. So 7% attack, 8 attack, and 3% defense on the Overlord's patch with a full moon enchant. Carbon Fiber Helmet managed to roll a 10% defense, 10% magic defense, and 7% hit points. Carbon Fiber Armor rolled 11% hit points and 6% magic defense with 181 hit points. And then the Balanced Blade has a 13% attack, 6% hit points, and 9% int. I think these were a mix of SSR scrolls, um, but as soon as I got something relatively decent, I stopped. I didn't keep re-rolling like crazy for optimal late chance on Bernhardt just yet. Juggler. Juggler's rolls, right? Juggler and Landius both got re-rolled like crazy. I should mention that. Uh, because they were my primary PvE, PvP tanks, so they required the most resources. So. In Juggler, you have a 7% defense and 7% hit points. Yeah. Juggler's Gift gives 15% hit points and 5% magic defense. Last Rite gave 10% defense, 6% magic defense, and 7% hit points. And the Oath of Justice has a 4% defense and 6% hit points. Yeah. None of these are perfect rolls, but this, this theoretically could be 10% with 5% and 5% magic defense, but you're never going to get that. Yeah. Last Rite has all three stats that you really want. And the percentage is 23%, which is quite solid. The theoretical maximum is 45%, right? 15% hit points, 15% defense, 15% magic defense. Good luck trying to get something like that. Realistically, 23%, something over 23% is already incredibly good. Similarly, you know, Juggler's Gift rolled it a whole bunch of times. I was very happy with the 15% hit points, so I kind of stopped there. Limitation of your gold resources, and you know what? There's other characters that are bigger fish to fry. And the Overlord's Badge, yeah. I rolled for two of the three, which was hit points, defense and hit points, and that was enough for me. Landius, similar kind of situation, right? 21% from the on the Thorns Helmet, 15% defense, 6% hit points. Overlord's Badge gave was probably the weakest that could be rerolled with 8% attack. I could use either hit points or, you know, something better than these two. But once again, resource limitations. Mirror armor, I never really rerolled because I'm not sure if I actually want to use a mirror armor on Landius long term. I feel like maybe I should switch him to something else, like Bloodline Magic Armor for protection against 
a win. But uh, haven't done it yet. For now, you know, he's been doing what I need, so it's been left as is for now. And the Dragon Slayer Gram. Yeah, I think I already mentioned it, but the 12% attack and 4% hit points is a solid roll. Not perfect, but enough to make me happy. Once again, Landis isn't exactly a top priority in terms of the resource commitment for me to roll, re-roll on, so that's why he's kind of been left like that too. They have been re-rolled a lot, don't get me wrong, but I kind of sell, settled on those resources once they could perform at a good level. As for Leaden, well, I already covered Leaden in detail previously, so I won't do it again. Other than the equipment of the heroes, there is one other thing I should cover for each of them, which is that new class mastery uh, enchant system. I actually don't know what I should be calling it, because on one hand, it is linked to them getting class mastery. On the other hand, if you open it up for like a new hero that you haven't opened it yet, it says open equipment mastery. So I don't know what to call it. You know. It's quite confusing to call it Equipment Mastery when you also have Equipment Enchants, so I like to call it the Class Mastery Enchant System. Take it as you will. So, for the Class Mastery uh, Enchantment System, you can see the base stat bonuses right at the bottom here. So, m for me, my primary focus for Landius was hit points and attack. Of course, there's going to be the skill increase because you need that skill increase for protection against Omega in PvP content. But uh, yeah, the main focus was hit points and attack, with a secondary focus on defense and some focus on skill. So that's why there's two skill rolls on the weapon and accessory, right? And then, then on the armor and headgear, I currently I plan to roll defense, hit points, and attack on both. So currently, his Landis's armor has defense, hit points, and magic defense. So that one can definitely be replaced. Just haven't done it yet. As for the weapon and accessory slots, they have attack, hit points, and skill. So that's the roll method. And so the theoretical maximum would be 80 attack in total. And then I'm not sure about hit points and so on, but it looks pretty good overall to me. So that is my Landius values. Nothing really, really, I mean, there's the, plus, the max skill value, you know, but that's the only one absolutely maxed out. But things like to be fair, things like this defense, 18 out of probably 20, I'm not going to reroll. So that's Landius. Next is Juggler. Juggler, because Juggler uses Triton and Great Dragon Barrier and Beast Shock, his attack stat is always replaced. Plus, my Juggler's enchant system is purely focused on hit points, defense, magic defense, and skill. Right. Skill will always be rolled on everyone because of Omega's existence, and I usually roll skill on both the weapon and accessory slots. So other than that, right, there's going to be hit points and defense on the accessory and weapons, and then on the headgear and armor, there's going to be defense, magic defense, and hit points. Right. So pretty solid values. Once again, no actually nothing maxed out. Even his skill roll is 24 out of 25, but you know, once again, it's good enough. That one point shouldn't make any difference. The interesting thing I should note is, just like with the regular enchant system, right? Weapons enchants, their limitations are lower, right? Defense is kept at 5 on the weapon mastery. And then attack, I think, by comparison, the attack enchant is something like 30, right? So the difference between 5 and 30 is absolutely huge, just saying. So that's why rolling for defense on the weapon slot generally isn't worthwhile. Uh, in this case, it's, it's done purely because my juggler has absolutely no need for any other stat, right? What else can I pick here? Attack is useless to him. Int is useless to him, right? He's already rolling skill and he's already rolling hit points. And match defense should be the exact same as defense. So... Might as well just roll defense, right? So that's pretty much it. Leaden. Leaden is pretty much in the exact same situation as Juggler, wanting defense and magic defense. Um, in his case, I don't even use him for PvP. 
So, and I know he generally doesn't even die anyways in PvE content. So I simply rolled defense and magic defense scrolls. I think I just rolled the SR ones, didn't roll a single SSR one. So all the values are minimal increases. That's why you see 32 and 27 increase. Uh, if you compare that, which is pretty much like half of the maximum amount. If you compare that to Juggler, right? He has he actually has 50% defense, 50 defense and 34 magic defense. So there can be work done on Leaden, but until I hit a state where I'm like, crap, Leaden is not performing the way I need him to. I probably won't need to reroll these. I do have six of these uh, SSR defense scrolls though, so I have the option to roll them. It's not like I'm lacking scrolls. It's more I'm not in a rush to roll them. Yes, there's six of those SSR ones, and there's even five of these magic defense ones. So lots of scrolls I can roll, just not in a rush to. I will eventually. Maybe whenever content comes up where Leaden actually struggles to one-shot enemies, that hasn't happened yet, but if it ever does come up, I'll re-roll those. Bernhard. Bernhard is attack-based, right? He, he he does increased damage, so I just rolled attack and hit points for him. That's pretty much it. No, he doesn't have perfect rolls either. I can certainly reroll these um, for increased stats. He's pretty much halfway, right? 44 out of 80 on the attack. Defense can be, I think, at 60 and so on. But I don't know. I mean. As I'm focusing less on PvP now, I don't see it as a big priority. I'll steadily roll reroll these, but no rush. There's other things to do at this time. And last but not least is Freya. Freya actually has nothing at this time because she doesn't need anything at this time. She's not really expected to one-shot targets or anything like that. If I were to roll Freya, it would be defense, attack, and hit points. Right? Skill is only required for PvP, right? but the defense will increase her fixed damage, her attack will increase her retaliation damage, you, hit points will increase her survivability, which may not be necessary, so you might even consider re-rolling de magic defense, because magic defense will increase the fixed damage from her exclusive. So, but that's Freya. You know what? I have some gold I can use, and I have some SR scrolls I can use, so why don't I just roll a bit of, of those, right? So, it's gonna be defense, and magic defense. I'm going to forget if I don't roll now, so that's why I'm rolling them. It's going to be, again, defense and magic defense here. And one roll is not too expensive, so... Oh, crap! I rolled a skill! <sighs> what a waste. That's okay. And then here... Defense! Let's save that. And magic defense. And I'm pretty much done. Just like that. Surprisingly kept rolling very high magic defense values. Huh. And very and lower than it should be defense values. And then on the weapon, of course, you want to roll attack. And I think that's pretty much it. And in the last stat, it's up to you whether you do attack or hit points. I have no real interest in rolling further, though. I don't, again, I don't think Freya really dies for what I use her for, so this is basically enough. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to cover in this first video. Even though I just covered just five heroes, that really took 30 minutes or so. So that is why I'm breaking down these 32, 35 heroes I have to cover, because it would be way too long of a video otherwise. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this information useful overall. And on that note, Nitro out. <laughs>